Thank you for joining us today at Discovery Park of America. I'm Katie Jarvis from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee, and I will be your host for this and other lessons with professors from the University of Tennessee at Martin. These lessons are for students in grades six through nine, but they will be of interest to anyone. Today, I'm excited to have Dr. Kate Erickson, an, an Associate Professor of Computer Science at the University of Tennessee at Martin. She will be introducing us to what Python 3 is, how to get it, and getting started in programming with it. So thank you, Dr. Erickson, for talking to us today about Python 3. Oh, hey, yeah, I'm quite happy to be here. Um, first off, I'm going to screen share a bit to show off the Python website as soon as I find it in my screen share, which I've got too many windows open. <laughs> Um, so in theory, we're seeing the Python website, and it is just www.python.org. And straight from this website, you can get doc access to documentation to learn how to do things in Python if you ever run into any questions, and also where you can go and download Python. One thing to keep in mind, you do want to download the latest version of Python, which currently is 3.8.5. It changes pretty regularly, so don't worry too much if there's a slightly different version when you get it or you already got it and it's a little bit old. The big thing is to make sure you have a Python 3 point something. Perfect. Now, Dr. Erickson, this is free, mm -hmm. right? It's free. Free, and, free downloads. Okay. And then do you already need to know how to program to get started on Python? No, not at all. Python's actually one of the best languages to introduce programming in. Uh, across the country, a lot of, I can do this, <laughs> um, a lot of computer science programs, that, that's what I'm talking about. They actually start their first level programming in Python. Uh, Python is designed, oh dear, sorry about that. No, wait, you can't see it. It's okay. It's nope. only me that is All messed. I see is the Python 3.8.2 shell. Fabulous. Sorry, <laughs> my screen had a panic attack and popped something else up. Um, anyways, I was saying Python is de designed from the ground up to be intuitive, easy to use. When you write programs in Python, it almost feels more like plain English than anything else. Um, and so this is what happens when you open IDLE, that is I-D-L-E. It is a pro Python shell, like it says up there. Uh, and so idle is completely free. It is actually part of the download. So when you go and download off of the uh, Python website, you get idle. Mm -hmm. And to just open it up on Windows, if you search IDLE, it's the first option. And so this is our window into Python. If you see the weird little three greater thans, that means we are at the Python prompt. And so anything we type in here is going to be processed by Python. One of my favorite uses for Python is as a calculator. It does math for us without having to think. Um, and so one other thing I do want to show you, I don't know if you would have seen it so far. Uh, well, you've hopefully seen this, six divided by five. Yes, division, nice and happy. Mm -hmm. One thing to keep in mind, Python 3, and this is different from earlier versions of Python, if we divide a number and it's going to come out to be something with a decimal point, it automatically gives us the version with a decimal point. If we do not want a decimal point, we need to use two division signs, and then it does not do. Then it does um, normal division with no remainder oh, and no wow. decimal point. Um, so we're going into a different direction than I had originally planned, but I'm going to go with it. Whole numbers are stored differently in the computer than numbers with a decimal point. And so when we do this norm division and we go from whole numbers to numbers with a decimal point, we're actually getting a more advanced number than we would otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, one interesting thing is the modulus function and you do that with a percent sign. And so that's just the remainder. So this is performing division. We're ignoring any remainders. We're ignoring any decimal places. If we use the, uh, percent sign, then we are finding the remainder. Oh, wow. And so it's a useful thing when you need to find those numbers for math. Mm -hmm. There are other ways it's useful in Python, and I'm starting us with that in case we actually get to that point. <laughs> Neat. Um, anyways, Python is a nice uh, general purpose programming language. You can do just about anything with it. 
the big thing I want to show off today, and I might need to go to a whole desktop share to share this, is the turtle library. And it's, it's like the thing with a shell and little legs, a turtle. Yeah. And so far there's nothing new to see, so it's okay if you don't see anything new. Um, import is a special keyword in Python. It's a little bit orange for me. You might be able to see that. Yep, it looks orange what, on, on this side too. It's what Python does when it recognizes a special word. And so turtle is the name of a library. So something extra that's not part of base Python, you've got to go out and ask for it. Um, now it is part of the original free download. You don't have to grab anything else to get turtle. You already have turtle. The cool thing about the turtle library, it is a Python version of the logo writer program. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't know if you've ever heard of logo or logo writer. Mm -hmm. So we're going back in history now. Logo was designed as a language to help introduce people to programming. Um, and at one point in time, there was a little robotic turtle that had a pen and you would write programs and the little robotic turtle would move around and draw things. Oh, we're wow. unfortunately not doing anything that cool. But we do still have a turtle. Our turtle is just going to be on our computer screen. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to call my turtle Sally because I like saying I have a pet turtle Sally. <laughs> and I can make Sally by saying, okay, from the turtle library, we're going to call this turtle function. And that makes a new turtle. And now I don't think you can see the turtle window. So I'm going to go ahead and do a desktop share. or a full screen share. And now do you see my big screen over here? Uh-huh. And so this is Sally right there. Sally doesn't really look like a turtle. I find that mildly upsetting. We can change that. We can say, okay, Sally, let's set your shape to be turtle. Oh. And so I do need to use quotation marks here. It can be single quotation marks or double quotation marks. Python does not care as long as you do the same. And now suddenly, Sally looks like a turtle. That is neat. Um, and so in turtle, you have essentially a grid. We cannot see the grid, but think your normal graph from your math classes. Right now, our turtle is sitting at position zero, zero. So if I tell Sally to move, I can tell Sally a X and Y coordinate to move to. So let's say, for example, 50-50. Sally moves to position 50-50. And so a couple of things. Sally, Sally's still very much facing to the right. Mm -hmm. Also, Sally drew a line. Your turtle is always going to have a marker, and the marker starts down on the ground. Mm -hmm. But we can lift, tell our turtle to lift up the marker with up. And now if I say sally.go2, um, Let's say I want X to be negative 50. And let's keep Y at the same place. Sally moves, but we don't see a line this time. Nice. Something we can do is leave a stamp. Can I do have one question. So how did yeah. we get rid of the line again? Uh, we can do that in a couple different ways. We can, oops, sorry. Sally.undo. I need to undo the stamp. Okay. <laughs> undo the move. Okay. You have to do that twice. Undo. Hmm? You have to do that twice or it looks like you're doing it three times, four times. Okay. So I had to undo all of the different steps we did, including putting down a stamp that we couldn't see yet. Okay. Up. It got, it undid and it undid to go to. So that's why there were a whole lot of undos. There. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. I just, Undo just, just rewinds one thing at a time. Okay. Um, and so you can do a clear, and that will just clear everything out. Okay. Um, anyways, what do you say we draw a square? I think that's a great idea. So instead of saying go to, we can tell our turtle to move forwards and backwards, which is easier for things like squares. So I can say sally.forward, and let's say 200. And now, do we want Sally to turn left or turn right? Let's turn left. And so now we need to tell Sally how many degrees to turn left. So we need to do 45 or 90? <laughs> 45 degrees? 
Let's check what a 45 degree to the left turn looks like. Oh, then we need to do 90. <laughs> so I can undo by saying, Sally, let's turn right 45. Okay. It helps if I spell Sally correctly. <laughs> this is why you might want a shorter turtle name than Sally. <laughs> um, and now we can say left at 90. Yep. Okay. And then if it's going to be a square, we need to go forward 200 again. Yeah. Tricky question. Do we turn left or right here? Oh, I would think left. <laughs> 90, yep. Mm -hmm. And so do. if uh -huh. you ever get confused, just pretend you are the turtle's face. Okay, perfect. So next we'll do Sally forward 200. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do Sally left 90. Mm -hmm. And then Sally forward 200. Mm-hmm. Looky there. Yay. And I do believe clear. We'll clear everything up. Oh, very Here cool. Does not reset Sally, so now she's facing down as opposed to the right. Mm-hmm. Okay, Sally dot left 90 will fix that. Yep. Um, and so now when we drew our square, that was a lot of the same stuff over and over, right? Mm -hmm. And so one of the things to keep in mind when you're programming is it's a good thing to be a lazy programmer. So let's make a program. Okay. Well, actually wait, time out before we make the program. Let's just test here. This is one of the cool things about Python. Okay. You don't have to make a separate program before testing. You can test one line at a time over here in the interpreter. Okay. Um, and so let's use a loop. Uh, and so a loop is just a way to repeat a set of code over and over. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we know exactly how many times we need to do something, right? It's a square, so four sides, we should do things four times. Mm -hmm. um, and so since we know exactly how many times to do something, the best type of loop to use in that instance is usually a for loop okay. because it lets us do things for a specific amount of times. Um, now we need a variable name that is not Sally. Okay. What are, we're naming a variable? Mm -hmm. Our counter. So we're going to count out up to four. Okay. So like one or do, does it need to be a name? A name. A uh, name. I'm going to go ahead and call it count. Okay. And so this is some Python magic. Okay. Um, range is a helper function. So if you know you need to do something four times, you say, okay, four variable in range four, and that will do something four times. Okay. If it's a different number like 10, it'll do things 10 times. Okay. And this is just very crash course into range. You, you can do more exciting things, but we're not up for that right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we want Sally to move forward, right? Uh-huh. It helps if I can spell. And do we want Sally to turn right or left? Left. And how much again? 90. All right. So let's, Python being weird, we need to hit enter one more time after we are done. And Oh my it. goodness. And look, we drew a square and Sally's even back at the center pointing in the direction we started in. That's awesome. Um, and so this is just all done in the interpreter. Now let's take the jump over to writing a program version of it. And so right in the idle shell, we can click on new file mm -hmm. and it'll pop up a blank file for us to start writing our program in. Now we do want to go back to the beginning where we had import turtle. Yes. And I want to create Sally. Oops, turtle. And why do we do turtle dot and then capital turtle? So that is actually creating our little turtle. We don't have a little turtle yet. Um, and so we have the turtle dot because we are saying from turtle, that okay. thing that we are importing, we want to make a turtle. Okay, so I have a question. What if you did like import cat? Would that do anything or is that in? <laughs> if someone made a cat program or if you had a file called cat, uh -huh. that would pull in everything in that file, read it in and get you ready to use anything written in that file. Okay. Turtle just happens to be what we're calling the logo writer. Code. Okay, gotcha. Or what, not we called it, but the people that wrote it. Right, okay. Um, we can set Sally's shape, again, to be a turtle. Mm -hmm. 
And here there are some options. None are as exciting as turtle, like you can have arrows and squares and circles and stuff like that. Um, and then we had our loop for count in range for Sally dot forward. Nope, Sally dot left. 90. There we go. Okay. And so first off, we need to save it. And so this is Python being weird. It will try to save it in the same place as where the Python is installed. Mm -hmm. You don't want to put it there. That occasionally breaks things. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's better to find somewhere else. I'm just going to dump it on the desktop. Okay. And then once you've saved it, we can go and tell it to run. And so it resets everything, pops up a new turtle screen, and does exactly what we just told it to do. Wow. And so do you want to have some more fun with loops? We can do some crazy things with squares. Yeah, let's see it. OK, so how many degrees are there in a circle again? 360. So we can say for time in range, 360. Let's have Sh Sally shift, maybe to the right, just because we were going to the left before, just a single degree. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to do some crazy things. We're going to say for every degree that Sally is shifting, let's draw a different square. Oh my, okay. Now to call, the, to do this loop inside this loop, I do need to use the tab key. Okay. And so now this four is inside this four. Okay. And if we run, we need to save again, but it'll automatically save. This is going to take a while. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we maybe should not have done all, all 360 degrees. Oh my goodness. And so, but Sally is moving one degree? One degree right? each okay. time and then drawing a square. Wow, that's really neat. And so you can make these really cool, they look like spirograph pictures yeah. with cool, without much trouble at all. Wow. So what could somebody do um, if they learn Python? What are some activities they could do or like in the future? What could they do uh, as a career? That's one of the cool things about Python. It is literally anything. Wow. Uh, Python is used by companies like Amazon to help come up with new algorithms to figure out how to recommend things to people, how to ship orders faster, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Uh, Python is used in a lot of machine learning applications. So there are actually a bunch of cool projects people set up to, for example, tell off of a camera feed whether or not the train is running on time today. Wow. Amazing. So, so computer it's science everywhere. <laughs> yeah, this is important to know. This is awesome. And especially, you know, students who have a knack for this stuff, which I think a lot of people do now that we've got smartphones and we're obviously virtual learning. So mm -hmm. very neat stuff. Um, and yeah, you can do anything with Python. I'm, I'm going to stop Sally because this is, this is it's, making me a little bit crazy. It's almost <laughs> complete though. <laughs> It's, it's not even halfway through the circle. Oh, no, okay. It's only through that, that tiny little piece. <laughs> I was waiting for it to, to close right there. <laughs> um, we can change Sally's speed. I'll, I'll change Sally's speed and start again. Let's see. So you can change speed. Wow. Speed zero. So I believe speed three is the default. Um, it can go from one to ten, with ten being faster than one. Mm -hmm. Or you can say zero, which just says don't animate the turtle, just make it happen. Just make it happen. So this is going to be super fast. At least comparatively. Yeah. Oh yeah, super oh. fast. Oh wow. Check that out. Uh, and so you aren't, you aren't stuck with only one color. You can do fun and exciting things like have it loop through a range of colors. Oh wow. Um, and so you would just add the, like, the sally dot color? And then in parentheses, put pink or red or 
Yes, that's one way to do it. Okay. Actually, something I want to add, and we, we can go ahead and add it to this program. I like this picture. It's very pretty. Yeah. <laughs> it would look really um, cool in multiple colors, too. Mm -hmm. Look. That's exactly what I was thinking. We can make every square a different color. Wow. Okay. I would love to learn how to do that. Uh, so let's go back to our, to our program. Um, and we're going to use a special, it, we call it a data structure, an array. And so an array is a kind of cheat as a programmer. Most of the time, if you want to store a piece of data, you put, have one variable name to one piece of data. Mm -hmm. But that can be annoying. For example, if you have a list of students in the class, instead of having a separate variable for you know, 30 to 50 students, you could just have one variable that holds all of the student names in the class. Mm -hmm. And so that's an array. Right. And so we're going to make a colors array. And in Python, they're actually called lists, not arrays. Um, but we can create one by using a square brace and then putting inside it whatever colors we want. Okay. So pink, separated orange. Separated by commas, looks like. Okay. Blue, separated by commas, yes. And we do need to use um, quotation marks. They can be single quotation marks or double quotation marks. It does not matter. Um, are there any other colors you can think of? Green. Let's see. Yeah, green, um, blue, orange, pink. I always think of Roy G. Biv back in elementary school. Red, uh, yellow, Roy G. We've got green, Biv, uh, purple. I think that'll be good. Okay, and we get to see if we remember, we know what all of these things are, or at least Turtle knows what all of these things are. Mm -hmm. um, so we can say Sally dot color. And then we need to give it the name of a color. And here's where things are going to get fun and exciting. Okay. And do you remember the modulus operator? The modulus operator? The percent sign where it tells us the yes. remainder? Yes. We're going to need that because our colors list, it is less than 360 in size. Oh, okay. Um, so we're going to tell it to go to position time in the array but it's going to be time, the remainder of time divided by the length. Oh, wow. <laughs> Whoa, that's getting crazy. A little bit crazy. Um, so when we want to get something from colors, we would say the first thing in colors is at position zero. Okay. Um, and so that position. In a lot of programming languages, we start at zero for reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is position one, position two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. But then when time hits seven, we're going to divide whatever time is by seven. Okay. So that means if we are at seven and we divide by seven, we go back to zero, we go back to the beginning. Uh -huh. um, and so I have heard people say that one of the best ways to think of it is like time when you're working on a 12 hour clock, you've got the morning hours and the afternoon hours. Mm -hmm. And so if you're on 24 hour times, you say 1300. Right. But if we're not doing that, we would say, well, it's the remainder after you divide the time by 12. Mm -hmm. So we're back at one o'clock. Right. Okay. And so that's all we're doing with the modulus here. Um, and then instead of hard coding seven, because I did not count how big this was, I'm using a helper function that instead says, however big colors is, divide it by that and tell me the remainder. Okay. And so this might work. Let's find out. Saving source. There we go. <gasps> oh, and look, the, even Sally's changing colors. Mm -hmm. As you change the colors you are drawing with, your turtle changes color too. That is neat. And that is a pretty picture that she is drawing. Wow. It's almost like a soothing video. It really is quite soothing to watch. Kind of calming. So maybe some people can do this as their last activity of the day and just, ah, done coding. And here's my creation. It's mm -hmm. a little artsy too. It is very artistic. I, I kind of enjoy just setting up things with random loops and seeing what happens. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, so this is something I only occasionally get to show off to students. Uh, and so the last time I showed it off, there was a group of students who were like, but can you draw a heart? I said, I am certain you can draw a heart. I don't know how to draw a heart, but 
I bet you can. Yeah. And I then skipped lunch to figure out how to draw hearts. Oh, um, wow. So anything you can think of that you want to draw, you can draw. Mm -hmm. um, you can do things like you, draw stick figure pictures. Mm -hmm. You can go more advanced than stick figure, but that's about where I, I lose my ability to draw things. Yeah. Um, you've got access to what we're doing here where you're drawing lines and the lines can be colored. You can also have a fill setting so you can fill in any closed shapes. Mm -hmm. That doesn't look quite so pretty on this one because all of the overlapping filled shapes right. of weird colors. Right. Um, you can stamp whatever shape Sally is that will be stamped. Uh, so let me just say Sally dot stamp and then Sally dot up Sally dot go to I don't know, 500. That was too far. <laughs> Sally is somewhere off the screen. Oh no. We left behind our stamp of a turtle in the center where she last just, was. Just a stamp, oh no. Let's see. There we go, brought Sally back. Yes. Sally is now there and she has a stamp sitting there in the center. So you can have your turtle bounce around and just put down stamps if you want to get creative in that way. Wow. Well, this was super neat. Is there anything else that you wanted to show us on Python? One last thing. Yeah. And it, it's going to be in turtle. Um, so this, this feels a little bit weird, right? How we have the loop inside a loop. Mm -hmm. We can make it easier. Okay. Um, one of the cool things about pretty much any programming language out there is that you can essentially redefine the language to be whatever you want. Mm -hmm. In this case, we're going to add a new function to Python that only our program knows about. Um, and so it's a new function just like how sally.forward is a function where we tell Sally to move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we start declaring a new function by using a keyword def. Mm -hmm. And notice it goes kind of orange because it's a new thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to call it square because we're going to make a function that draws a square. Okay. And it's going to take a single argument of side. And so anything inside the parentheses are an argument, just like we would as an argument to forward tell Sally how far forward to move. Mm -hmm. um, and so in this case, we're going to tell Sally how big should the side of a square be. And then all we need to do is rewrite our code, but instead of using forward, we're gonna use side. Okay. So, oops, need the for loop. For count, okay. So we still want to do this four times, mm -hmm. one for each side of our square. Uh, Sally.forward side, however big that happens to be. Mm -hmm. Sally.left 90. And now we can go down here, oops, and delete these three lines. Okay. And instead say, let's call square oh. of 200. Actually, you know what? Let's make it bigger. We'll, we'll fill more of the screen that way, right? 400. And so we've just added a new function into Python, never existed before, brand new, only exists in our code. And we can run the module, save it, and see what happens in <gasps> much bigger squares now. Wow. Very cool. And it kept the colors and everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All we changed was we pulled out the loop that was creating the square itself, uh -huh. gave it its own name so we uh -huh. could call it separately, uh -huh. and then set it loose. That is awesome. And so fun. It also means if we now want to, again, do the 360 degree loop with a slightly smaller square, we could have another pattern inside this pattern using our square function because we made it. Wow. That is so, I'm just like staring at it like this. That's so cool. I also have similar problems when making <laughs> yeah. iPhone pictures. I, I just kind of go, ooh, look, this is pretty. Yeah, and you just sit and stare <laughs> at it for a little bit because you made that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So what else can you do on Python? Um, pretty much anything you can think of. Okay. Um, a cool thing that is probably going to be make more sense for um, the the older students mm -hmm. uh, is Caddis. And we're going in a completely different direction than I had originally meant to, but it's fun. 
Please ignore the mess on my desktop. Um, and so let's check out caddis.com. And so this is a free open site. And so for something like 70 years, I'm making up the numbers. I'm probably horribly wrong. Um, there has been a programming competition, the, I want to say international computer programming competition. Mm -hmm. collegiate programming competition. I always get mixed up with that C. Mm -hmm. um, and so for those contests that happen worldwide, every, uh, well, professors sit down and they make up, mostly professors, uh, sit down and make up a brand new set of challenging programming problems to share with the world. Mm -hmm. And so pretty much all of those problems that have ever been made are here online waiting for you to come and give them a shot. Wow. Okay. And you can sort them by difficulty. And so we can start with Hello World. I don't know how familiar you are with programming languages in general, but typically the first thing you do in any programming language is say Hello World. Oh, okay. Reason. Good to know. Um, and so to interact with the, well, to print something out to the user, Python very conveniently uses print. And then you tell it in quotation marks what you want it to print. Oh, wow. Okay. And so Caddis here is asking us to print out hello world exclamation mark. Oops, need quotation marks. Okay. Looking right, yes. Mm -hmm. So I can copy this line and go over to submit. need to move the faces, sorry, oh, and okay. submit. Yay, the so, problem was accepted. Okay. Um, and you can find new problems to do by clicking on problems. Mm -hmm. And if you click on difficulty, it sorts it in increasing order. Okay. And you, you definitely want to start with the lower numbers mm -hmm. because the higher numbers, those are things that give like grad students a hard time. Oh, wow. But the lower numbers are, are where you want to start. Um, and so there are stories to problems, and you've got to solve the puzzle to figure out how to make it work correctly, fun things like that. And so this is a way to kind of challenge yourself when you are uh, bored, mm -hmm. excited, and trying out new Python things. Yeah. So would Python and Caddis, would this be kind of building blocks for people who might like build apps maybe or websites or um this is more caddis is kind of a bit closer to general purpose programming okay. so it's competitive programming which is a weird little niche of you've got not too much time and you've got tricksy things you need to deal with okay uh, one of the cool things though is a lot of hiring com uh, a lot of companies when they are hiring mm -hmm. they'll actually test new programmers using problems that look a lot like this oh wow okay um Python programming, it wouldn't be so much like a phone app, but it could be a small game. Okay. It could be um, anything where you interact with the user. Mm -hmm. Python's actually really useful for any general tasks you have. Mm -hmm. um, I use it as a language to help out with if I'm doing anything repetitive mm -hmm. on my computer for work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it helps to automate tasks. Okay. I am pulling up a tab so I can show you something useful. Sure. Um, snake wrangling for kids. Um, and so this is a free, completely free online PDF you can download. It's actually part of a book. If you want a physical book, it does cost money. Okay. Um, and so don't, don't be alarmed. It says it's for kids and it has a cowboy on it, but it is, it is actually very useful. I, I use it as an adult. Okay. Um, and it has pretty much everything you need to know to get started programming in Python. Um, it does have a whole section on things you can do with Turtle. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot, here's the Turtles where it starts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> turtles galore, graphical stuff. It also has general programming things that we did not get a chance to talk to, um, like order of operations, using variables, strings, lists in more detail. Um, conditionals, things like that. Mm -hmm. So this is a great resource to get started with Python and again, completely free, nothing to worry about there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else um, that you'd like to share with us on Python? 
no, I, I think I've gone in some very strange directions. I, I'm running out of steam here, and I should probably stop before we get into anything else right now. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dr. Erickson, for teaching us about this. And um, thank you to our viewers for joining us today. We look forward to continuing our mission here at Discovery Park of inspiring children and adults to see beyond. For more educational resources, visit our website at discoveryparkofamerica.com education. Thank you.